Hey guys, welcome to the Trash Picture Show. Today I'm going to be discussing something controversial and something that some people may consider belongs in the realm of fan fiction. But I think it's interesting and I think it merits a discussion. John Carpenter's The Teen, which came out in 1982, is a fantastic seminal cult horror movie. And I think what really makes it such a great movie is the ambiguous ending. However, there's some people out there that have always wondered, well, what happened after that movie? Was McCready the teen? Was Childs the teen? Did the teen make it to the mainland and take over? Well, there is two formats that one could look at to see where the story progresses. Three, but that one doesn't really count. However, I'd be remiss not to mention Peter Watts's novel, The Tins, which is essentially a retelling of John Carpenter's movie from The Tins perspective. It's actually a fantastic read and you can find it probably in audiobook format. This version decrees that it was actually Childs that was actually the tin in the end. And it is incredible to get the tin's perspective on humanity. And it's discussed when it realizes we only have one central nervous system located in our brain. And it considers our brain to be a tumor. No. That was how it worked? That was how these empty skins moved off their own volition? Why I'd found no other network to integrate? There it was, not distributed throughout the body, but walled up into itself, dark and dense, and insisted. I had found the ghost in these machines. I felt sick. I shared my flesh with thinking cancer. But yeah, as fantastic as Peter Watts's novel is, it's still a companion piece to the original movie. And I want to focus on the two pieces of media that acts as a sequel to the film and decide which is the best of the two. The first medium I'm going to be looking at is the Dark Horse comic sequel to The Tin, which ran from 1991 to 1994. The title had to be changed to the original Howard Hawks title, The Tin from Another World, because Marvel at the time had the character from the Fantastic Four with his own spin-off comic called The Tin. So Dark Horse did not dare incur the wrath of Marvel, so they went with the original movie title. It actually made a lot of sense for Dark Horse to tackle this property because they had such success with both Alien and Predator. And here was another horror franchise that revolved around a malvoyant extraterrestrial that Dark Horse knocked out of the park with the first series. They did do three different series of this comic, the second one being Climate of Fear, which is okay, but loses a lot of the original elements from the movie. I mean, we get a kaiju version of the thing, which is kind of cool, but it really departs from the paranoia and suspense of the original movie. And the third one, Eternal Vows, that goes very fucking silly towards the end. I mean, McCready turns up looking like this. But yeah, that first run of Tin Comics with art by John Higgins and writing by Chuck Ferrer really captures the style and atmosphere of the 82 movie. However, there is one criticism I have to cite. The fact is, while the latter series has got four issues, this first run of the Tin Comic only got two issues, and that really affects the pacing of the story. As a result, there's no time for Higgins to build up any kind of tension. The story progresses at a breakneck speed and there's no sense of that paranoia that made the original film so good. Ironically, Climate of Fear actually gets that element right despite being a lot more bombastic and way more over the top than this first outing from Dark Horse. With all that said, the first Dark Horse tin story is pretty cool and in its own way does work as a wordy sequel to the movie. The follow-up comics don't do such a good job. Climate of Fear, while still keeping the paranoia element, changes the location from an Arctic setting to an Argentinian jungle and as a result loses a lot of the impact that that first movie and comic did have and Eternal Vows is just fucking bizarre. It's more akin to Species than The Thing, where a woman who's been infected by The Thing 
goes around a naval base in New Zealand infecting all the sailors till McCready turns up looking like a fucking superhero and burning the town to the ground. But again, keep in mind those two stories do not act as a direct sequel to the Tin movie. The first comic does and you can ignore those two stories completely. Just stick to that original Dark Horse run and you will thoroughly enjoy this comic as a follow-up to the original movie. The next contender we have for a sequel to the Tin is the 2002 video game. This was released by Vivendi Games under Black Label Studios for the PS2, Xbox and PC. I'm not going to get into the gameplay or the trust mechanics of said video game. I'll probably do a review of the game more in depth later on. I'm mainly going to focus on the story and how well it connects to the original movie. The story is set 24 hours after the events of the movie and you take control of a character Blake ahead of a special forces rescue team sent to investigate what happened at Outpost 31 taking orders from the mysterious Colonel Whitley. The early part of this game fantastically captures the movie and while as I said I'm not getting into the gameplay the mechanics also do lend a hand at portraying what it would have been like to be in the events of the 1982 John Carpenter classic. You get to explore the remnants of the base, McCready's shack and even discover the UFO that Blair was constructing along with the Norwegian camp. However, as the game progresses, it goes a bit X-Filesy in more ways than one, with it turning out that Whitley actually wants to weaponize the thing. Ironically, Whitley's voiced by William B. Davis, yes, the actual cigarette smoking man from the X-Files, and he even wants to use the tin to cure himself of cancer, which, if I'm not mistaken, was also a plot in the X-Files. Blake later finds himself captured by Whitley's forces in a research facility housing captured tin creatures that are being experimented on by a Dr. Faraday. The cool thing about Dr. Faraday is not only is his likeness based on but he's also voiced by John Carpenter. This element of the story is kind of cool but again the whole mad scientist researching on the tin feels more X-Files plotline slash Wayland Dutani in Aliens than it does the thing. I don't know, it just feels out of place. The other issue I have with the game, and you'll probably think it's a nitpick, is that it's supposed to be a sequel to the 1982 classic taking place 24 hours after, but all your weapons, all your equipment, all the trappings of this game is from 2002. There's even a level with automated turret guns. And before some smart R says, well, in Aliens they had automated turret guns. Yeah, Aliens was set in the future. Again, this game is supposed to be set in 1982. I genuinely think this game has a fantastic opening that really embraces the source material of the movie. But as it progresses, it devolves into a run and gun action shooter. And while the game's trust mechanic in 2002 was remarkable, it just wasn't quite there yet to make a definitive tin video game. With all that said, the game is worthy of checking out, but if it's a toss up between the comic and the game, I'm gonna have to go with the comic over the game every time. Just the artwork, the atmosphere, it really does a better job than the video game. The game is still worth checking out, it's just continuity wise, it does not make sense for some of the tech to be existing in this game when it's supposed to be set in 1982 and the human conspiracy element is absolutely redundant when you have such a fantastic premise as an alien shapeshifter in your mists. Also in case anyone's wondering Carpenter endorsed and said both are canon which makes no sense because they contradict each other but that's no surprise from a guy whose mantra is fuck you pay me. God damn it, I love you, Carpenter, you cranky bastard. So guys, that's my thoughts on the two pieces of sequel media to the tin. Have you played the game or read the comic? If you have, let me know in the comments below. And also, let me know which do you think works as the better sequel. My name is Martin, this has been the Trash Picture Show. And uh, yeah, have a good one. Take care. Bye now.